Today's episode is brought to you by Babbel. Babbel's going to get you speaking all them languages. Also, today we're brought to you by Tushy. Hello, Tushy's going to take care of that butt. It's a weird thing to say, but I'm going to keep saying it. <laughs> all right, let's jump into this podcast. Hello, everybody. It's time for Ghosts and Friend Dogs. Friend Dog in the morning. In the morning. <laughs> Hello there, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Cags and Crandor in the morning. Exciting episode. episode. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx. Uh, so, uh, here's the excitement. Get ready. Okay. Get pumped. I'm pumped. Woo. That was, uh, uh I shouldn't have gotten pumped up for that. I was kind of, it was a letdown. I'm going to let you know. Mm, I'm feeling it. I'll tell you what I am feeling. The pressure drop. My sinuses are roasted. What do you mean? Is it because it's getting cold? Uh, well, it went from 75 one day to 38 the next day. Woo. Wait. Whoa. Why? Wow. Oh, weather. <laughs> Good job. Good job, scientists. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's cold fronts and warm fronts. and everything. They're just like, oh, it's super warm in early November. But they're like, get ready. It's going to get super cold in the second half of November. So I'm like, all right. So one day I was like shorts and t-shirt. And the next day it's like, boom, it's like winter. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Hmm. But apparently it's colder than normal, I guess. So, eh, you know, a little give, a little take. But every time pressure stuff like that happens, it always like, uh, I don't get sick, but I just feel like blah. You know what I mean? I I, I absolutely know what you mean. Yeah, because it's like the pressure changes mess with your your joints and your sinuses and everything. So like, I'm convinced that made my my plantar fasciitis stuff worse, which is better now, which is good. I <laughs> forgot that was a thing we talked about last yeah. week. It's actually better now, so that's good. Uh, and then my sinuses, like as soon as that hit, as soon as the temperature drop. I started getting, like, sinus pain, and then, like, in my other thing, and I was just like, ugh. And it just kind of comes and goes where it's, like, you'll feel it a bit, like, ugh, and then it gets better, and then it's, like, ugh, and then, you know, it's it's annoying. I also had it where, like, whenever it would happen, I would just, ugh, like, my, I don't know, my head just feels, like, bleh, almost like allergies in a way. But I was it about to say, happens. it sounds like allergies, yeah. yeah. So it could also be allergies, but it, it always happens with the pressure changes. I've seen people... Uh, mention it online. There's the. It's like that people uh, or that people. It's like the people that are like, eh, I know a storm's coming because the barometer pressure's dropping. My knees feel it. It's yes. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We um. This past week, it was. It started raining for the first time in a long. You know, it's L.A. Mm. And every time it hits November, December ish, and then usually in February as well, we get I don't know about three or four days of solid rain, just straight in a row. And this week we had. I knew it was raining because I almost freaked out. I was laying in bed, might have been 3 a.m., and I, like, shot awake. Like, whoa, because I heard a noise that sounded like something attacking my walls. Oh. And I didn't know what it was. I, I wish I could do it on my microphone, but, like, like that kind of? Yeah. This terrible sound. And I realized that it was rain on the window. And I hadn't <laughs> heard rain in so long that I just forgot, dude. Like, not uh, ASMR rain on a phone where it's kind of there but also a little bit fake. I mean, like, surround sound coming down <laughs> torrential rain. <laughs> I was... I, I couldn't believe it. I laughed so hard. I was like, I can't believe I forgot what hard rain sounded like. That's crazy. I love rain. I do, too. It, and it rained for about a day and a half straight, and hilariously... I almost died about three times driving into work, and it takes me five minutes to get to work. That's how messed up it was. <laughs> I, like, I was just driving down the road, and I almost saw or was involved in three crashes. That's a classic L.A. Like normally Classic in LA, L.A. <laughs> normal, normally, you only got one crash along the way, but here, that's three if it's raining. Right, right. <laughs> it was so bizarre, but uh, yeah, everyone tried to plan their day. I got into the office, and everyone's like, uh, can I leave a little bit early? Because I'm uh, driving up here. I had to drive early because I wanted to avoid the traffic because of all the rain and people are crazy out there. It's like, yeah, it's crazy that we now, it rains once and everyone's like, can I change my entire life? 
because it's raining and i'm like yeah go go ahead it's fine Let's do that man i i would not want to live where it doesn't rain i love rain too much i don't know what it is about la i can't tell you what it is about la that makes people turn insane but i imagine it's the same thing as snow in a lot of places yeah. you know what i mean yeah i mean it's yeah if you're not used to driving in it you're gonna be like whoa i just don't know why people don't go slower I watch people in like Porsches going 95 in rain, and I'm like, well, no wonder you're about to die. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, those people. They're gonna do what they do no matter what. That's just it exactly is what it is. <laughs> I've watched people do that in snow. I remember when I lived oh, in yeah. Buffalo, I would see dudes in like insanely non-snow friendly cars. <laughs> yeah, like those, especially the when I was in college. There were all those dudes from New York who had the really low Hondas that had all the anime stickers and shit on the back. <laughs> oh, yeah, yep, yep. When it's when it snowed, those dudes would go so damn fast. It didn't ma They would just, like, spin. I think they were like, dude, I could finally drift. I don't know what they were Probably. thinking, but it was wild. <laughs> Yo, it's only, like, five inches. It's easy. Look <laughs> and roll out, boys. And they just roll out in the anime Hondas. <laughs> I'll never forget Night one time music just starts playing. <laughs> there was one time when I was coming back from a party or something. As I got in the car, snow started falling. By the time I got back to campus, I would say there's about three or four, maybe five inches already on the ground. It was like a 15 minute drive, dude. It was crazy. <laughs> and I was fine there, which is why yeah. if I could. I'm like, if I can drive through that, and I'm not a great driver, if I can drive through that, surely everyone else can figure out a way to drive through rain. But yeah. no, apparently that's not a thing we do here. In LA, if it rains, you take like a hard left-hand turn through traffic for no reason, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't get the rain stuff because like I'm after driving in the rain so many times here like it's just nothing like if you're if I'm gonna go drive somewhere it's like oh it's raining it's like who cares you know it's like, bizarre it's to me here yeah I don't understand it but it's a big deal here I guess everyone that and earthquakes although again as a reminder to everyone in the rest of the world if you just look at the the history of the last year we had more earthquakes than we did rain that's LA <laughs> <laughs> just a reminder well, I mean, I don't think I'd want to drive in an earthquake, but I don't think I'd just, I just wouldn't want I don't to think be you'd in an notice. earthquake in general. I don't think you would notice if you were driving in an earthquake. Well, it probably depends on how big the earthquake is. I don't think you would notice. Unless it's, yeah, I mean, unless it's one of those, like, movie-level earthquakes where the, the highway always cracks open and people fall inside. But other than that, it's just, you know, it's, stuff shakes. And if you're in a car, you're moving. It's kind of like yeah, when people talk shaking. about... Um, you're not shaking. No. Most of the time, you're shaking because the road's bumpy and crappy to begin with. <laughs> That's true. There's a lot of the highways <laughs> in L.A. I don't know if it's because of the dirt and oil and crap builds up, and then when it rains, it kind of gets all mucky. But a lot of the highway stuff in L.A. has... Um, I don't even know how to describe it. When you drive over, it's like... <laughs> all over the highway system. And that shakes. There's times where I'm driving my car shaking because of that more than anything else. Are you talking about like the things they put at the airport to wake you up? I don't know why they put them where it's like. Brr, brr, brr. In, a, in a way, I'm sure it has a real term and I'm sure there's a real purpose behind it. But it is. It just makes noise. Not like the noise when you go off the side of the road, like like you're talking about those wake up strip things that are like, it shakes the car so you pop awake so you don't drive off the road. It's different than that. Road. The way they do it here in LA, it isn't as deep as that, so it doesn't shake your car violently. But it's like there's a like a bump every quarter mile. There's like a like like a bump you hit, all on the 405. I don't know what that's about. If anyone lives in LA and they know what that's about. Let me know. It seems to me like it's something, it has to do with something with maybe the road construction for rain purposes, maybe? I don't, I have no clue. Okay, are they, I think I found, they're called rumble strips. Okay. Took me a bit of Googling. But the rumble I strip, I, I think, it. is the thing where it's supposed to shake your car and wake you up, right? Yeah, it makes it go like, Brr. This one says LA adds rumble strip to street in hopes of eliminating street racing. Oh, I figured it out. Okay. Oh, why are LA's why are LA's highways so so bumpy? 
Um, this is exactly the noise. It is. It's less rumble strip. And it's more of a thunk, 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 thunk. Uh. That's exactly what it is. Um, apparently, the constant thunk, thunk noise you hear while driving on some freeways in LA is because freeway surfaces are concrete in LA. The concrete is in sections with separators every few feet. This helps stop the concrete from cracking due to shifting. Oh, interesting. Mm, so that, okay. All right, interesting. Yeah. I was, now I know. Uh, it, it, yeah, it's it feels like a rumble strip because you're driving, you know, 65, 70 miles an hour. Yeah. But if you're going slow, it'd be a thunk, 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 thunk. Yeah, I see. Well, yeah, you learned something today. I did learn something. I've been <laughs> stressing about that, and now I know. <laughs> Could have Googled this years ago. Did not. Just well, complained. Now it has great podcast material. Yep, great podcast uh, material. <laughs> Concrete level podcast material. How's your uh, How's your working? How's your your life this week? Any qu- qu- crazy, wacky, crazy, wacky? Crazy, wacky? No, dude. I every time I do five minute gaming news, people message me like, "Dude, you look like you need sleep. Are you okay? Are you fine?" You try to edit fifteen hours of God of War footage. <laughs> I'm losing my damn mind over here. Is editing is the most unless you're doing something that's a passion project and you're enjoying every minute. 99% of editing is the most boring, tedious, garbage work ever. And all I'm doing is going through 15 hours of footage and making sure that the things Gerard and I say in the background, you don't hear v- game audio. Because we have to, we're playing it on a, on a screen, right? So yeah. it isn't like we have headsets on, we're doing it like they do in the broadcast booth. of like, no, we're just sitting there playing with the microphone. And so in the background, sometimes if stuff gets really crazy, you can hear the actors on the screen or whatever talking. And so I have to go through because I'm one of those people who actually cares about the final product. And right. so I like I'm going through and I'm making an effort to make it sound good. I'm doing all this stuff and it's just supreme tedium to the nth <laughs> degree. And I know everyone's like, Jesse, what don't you have editors? I do. And they're doing all the other things we do. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to, uh, you know, stuff on Patreon and Multiplayer Mayhem and all they're doing all that other stuff. And I'm sitting here just like I could be making a video I want to make instead. I'm going like the funniest part is Gerard and I played God of War for several days, and I would say we did about uh, one solid seven-hour day, and then a few like three-hour days. And uh, he was like, "All right, so can I come over tomorrow?" I was like, "Dude, I need to start putting this together. I can't. We can't just keep playing. I will have no time to put this up on the internet." <laughs> and I know, probably in his mind, he thinks that I just take the audio timeline and mix it with the video timeline and then like ship it. But I'm over here just like, okay. I remember that in day two, hour three, we did a puzzle and I wrote down a note that we spent uh, 45 minutes on that puzzle. So I'm going to go back and for the viewer, I'm going to go in and edit that puzzle out or down so that uh, it's a better watching. I'm that guy. (laughs) And it infuriates me. (sighs) That I know that in the end, really, it doesn't matter all that much. That's truth. In fact, people are going to be like, Jesse, I like watching all that stuff and behind the scenes. I don't like that you're cutting it out. Right. Or if I left it in, people will be like, oh, what a waste of time. And no matter what, it's a, it's a, it's a lose-lose. <laughs> but yeah. I'm just like, okay, I just want to make it something that people can watch and it flows well and isn't just like a lot of downtime. So I try my hardest. I feel like I've learned over 12 years what makes a good video. And I'm trying so hard to do this. But I also know that at the end of the day, it doesn't really, it like doesn't matter. <laughs> really. Yeah. And it's just, I'm in my own head trying to make something good for me that I can be proud of. And that's the problem. Is I'm my own harshest critic. What did I just say? Harshest critic? Harshest that's right. I'm, that's what I am. I'm my own harshest critic. And I <laughs> just want it to be good for me so I can be like, well... That's good. Like, I'll upload a video. The other day, I uploaded a God of War. And uh, in the video, it was a little... When it got to YouTube, it was like a little grainy in one part. And I was like, is that YouTube? Or did I do that? Am I the problem? I went back, rewatched that part in the original video. I was just like, what? Did I do something wrong? That's where I'm at mentally. And <laughs> normally, that's not a problem for me because, it, you know, I do one major video every so often. Now, I'm doing it every day again. It reminds me of, like, 2017. I'm back in it, and I honest to God hate it. I hate every minute of it. When people are like, Jesse, I'm so happy to see you doing Let's Play again. This is amazing. This is my favorite thing in the world. I need all of you to know. Thank you. I'm honored. 
this is gonna be the last let's play I do. <laughs> I've convinced, I'll do stuff on stream and throw it up on Cox Clips, that's fine. That takes no work at all. Yeah. But my God, doing this again, reminding myself what it used to be like back in the day of what like every video was, F that business, F it. I hate it so much. Never doing it again. I this is, I'm over it. <laughs> I'm I mean, so live broken by it. Is just built better for doing that. Absolutely, absolutely. It's so much better. The YouTube, a great example. If people are curious about timing, it's like this. I will take this, uh, you know, hour and a half because I'm trying to do big chunks because it's a huge game, and I know that if we did small chunks, it would take us forever, and I'd be yeah. uploading this crap on my channel, and I just don't want to do that forever. And so I'm doing like an hour and a half chunk every time. And so I sit down. So that means I have to edit an hour and a half, which usually that hour and a half translates to about two and a half hours of editing. So now I'm editing this hour and a half chunk at two and a half hours. Click render. Now I'm rendering for another 35, 45 minutes, which thank God I have a good computer and can do it that fast, right? Yeah. Then I take that, upload it to YouTube. Taking an hour and a half of high rendered footage at like, I don't know, 30 megabytes a second, something crazy like that. Upload it to YouTube. YouTube is gonna do all of its stuff. The YouTube upload and processing time is maybe another two hours. Then I have to wait for this stupid thing to do checks. YouTube checking system is <laughs> yeah. the most garbage thing that ever existed. <laughs> Hate it. It's it can dumb. range from either five minutes or five hours. There is no, there's like no rhyme or reason to it. And so I have to wait for that. And then when that's done, I click live and I pray anyone wants to watch it. <laughs> that's it. That's a, it is soul sucking. And if you're like, I, uh, Jesse, you know, five minute gaming news is fine. That's what you're going to get from now on. I might do five minute reviews. I might start doing that, but I'm done. Long form YouTube content. I'm done with it. I got no patience. I'm over it. It's, I'm over uh, it. Because I'll put my stream VOD things that I like on the, my Kren Clips channel. And sometimes, like the other day, I played God of War for like an hour and a half. And then I was like, I'll throw it up on the, the old Kren Clips. And that shit took like three hours to upload and process and then i was like all right and then the next day i checked still processing and i was like oh this shit's bugged so i uploaded it again and it was bugged it like did it properly <laughs> that uh <laughs> that happens to me so often that when it if it's processing for more than about 20 minutes i just re-upload the video i just delete it and re-upload <laughs> yeah. i don't even i'm not i don't take chances <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it bugs out all the time, which, you know, small indie company, I, you know, I expect it. Yeah, the worst part is, it's like, oh, well, I guess I'll just spend another hour and a half uploading a thing. Like, come on, it's, it's, so, it's so frustrating to deal with YouTube, and it's mind-blowing they don't... Again, I've had this conversation with them, and they're not going to listen to me, because I'm not, you know, important at all to them. But every time I have a meeting with anyone at YouTube, they're always like, so what kind of features are you looking for? I'm like, stop trying to be a streaming platform and make your video platform good. <laughs> uh, yep. What I mean with Twitch, I'm like, stop trying to be a video platform and make the streaming good. Be what you are. Nah, I can't do that. And no one listens to me because some executive somewhere was like, the money's in this thing. We got to go. Just like how YouTube is now apparently TikTok. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yep. Like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> However, it has been great because uh, to make YouTube shorts, I just go back to my old WoW videos. And you can like clip parts of them, make them in the shorts. Easy. It's great for content production, but it is literally a scam. I want to let you know, last month we put out 31 short a day. And those did really, really well. And uh, total earning from making those, $72. <laughs> That's not even a joke. The, the YouTube messaged me like, you've qualified for a YouTube shorts fund. Uh, payment. I was like, yeah, and I clicked it. 70, that's 30 days of content for s 70 bucks. That is the, the amount of time and energy to make. The, it's insane to me. The whole thing is insane. I'm me, so uh, over, I'm so broken. YouTube shorts are literally just there for like publicity. Like I don't even monetize them. Well, it's you can't, you can't, like you can't monetize them. Yeah, you can. You can now. If you told me, watch my video. And a one minute ad came on before your 15 yeah. seconds short. I would be like, F this. That's no. what I'm saying. I wouldn't do it just for that reason. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to watch that. No I way. Just, I'm just trying to drive traffic to my old videos and have people be like, oh, yeah, Krendor exists. That's I will say it. it is a good traffic driver. 
Cox Clips, yeah. I do nothing but upload stuff I've already made on Twitch, and it's almost at 100,000 subscribers. And I've done nothing. I don't even go there. I manage <laughs> nothing on that channel. I have, a, I have a great team of people that upload and do all the work for me. I do nothing, and it's succeeding, which makes me sad because I am not involved at all, and they're doing far better than I've ever done. <laughs> I feel like this is the every like two or three months we have a how are you doing Jesse and you're like are falling apart by doing YouTube. The problem is is I get in a good place and I'm like all right I'm finally in a good place let's get back to doing like let's get into the work again and I get back into the work and I'm like this sucks I know why I stopped doing this. <laughs> every time I convince myself that somehow I can make things better. Or somehow I can try a new thing with this platform that I've been on for 12 years thinking somehow it'll be different this time. And it never is. It's never different. Well, you're that person who keeps trying to fix somebody. You're not going to fix them. That's absolutely true. <laughs> yeah, the person needs to be fixed is me. I need to learn to say no is what I need to do. <laughs> oh, my your, God. Uh, how's your calendar looking? It would be fine if I didn't have to spend every waking moment doing God of War. Like a great example, we're not done. I have to go back. I have to find time to play with Gerard still while trying to do all this other stuff that I want to do. Like, I want to do this video I've had in my mind for six months. And I was like, you know what? November's the perfect time to get it done. I got nothing on my schedule. And now it's God of War every day, all day. I'm losing my mind. I, was like, I just wanted to make this video. And I'm looking at my schedule right now. Like, I have a, a fun stream I'm going to do on the 17th. And I got, like, a... Uh, uh, D D thing that's Final Fantasy 14 related on the 19th, and then after that, nothing through the rest of the year. It's just chill, and I'm just like, it's not chill. It's all a lie. I gotta fit God of War in there. So, like this game, <laughs> I w I love this game. I also want to roll into a ball and just like slowly well, turn to dust. Might see my thing is, uh, I mentioned this on the Kren minute. I know you did. <laughs> I really don't care about these types of games. There's so many of these types of games. And, like, I get that they're good games. I get people love these games. But I just get so bored when it's like, all right, I'm ready to play a video game. And then it's like I'm watching a movie for 40 minutes. And I'm like, am I going to, like, play a game? Or am I going to, like, watch a movie here? Like, what are, what are we doing? And it's like, oh, don't worry. You're playing a game. You hit L1, R1, L1, R1, Y for a, a span of 20 seconds in the next 20 minutes. It's like, oh, pfft. and then I can walk for 20 minutes on the pre-selected path to my next cinematic. Very good. Like, uh. My favorite part is I totally disagree with you. I am watching, like when Gerard and I play, I was actually going to make a review of God of War, but I was like, I'll get, I'll get roasted on the internet for this. I can't do this. But I love like the intro and then the like story bits and the things that are going on with that. And then the minute he, Gerard's like, all right, it's time to go fight stuff. I'm like, I want to see the story more. <laughs> like, we just I'd rather just have a video game movie. I, will, I Honestly, <laughs> I would rather watch it. There's moments. There's a part where we're in uh, It's a little bit of spoiler for people watching, but there's like a, a zone that's kind of elfish in origin. We'll say, and there's a lot of just going around exploring stuff. And I was just like, Not th nothing story-wise is happening. We, um, That's like my They're making part. us do this. Explore. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> I think we're totally opposite on this. I was like, oh, I hate this. I, the review I would have written is, God of War is great except when you play God of War. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, except the part where it's like, all right, fight this enemy that's super hard and takes five minutes to kill. Like, for me, I'm like, nah, I don't want to do that. I hate that part. Like, that's why I love Breath of the Wild. They're just like, all right, and you're free. And I'm like, dude, yes. I'm like, yeah, I can do everything. I need, I need someone to tell me what to... I, <laughs> about I need someone to be like, this is why you're yeah. doing this. This is why this is happening. I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. That guy's the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need you need the structure, you need the handhold. Like, come on, here we go. It's the story adventure. I'm just like, dude, let me let me free. I want to go find some like weird crabs and shit on the water, and then like a secret cave or something. And they're just like, no, you got to go to the story. And I'm like, I can literally just be building Warhammer while watching someone pl like play this game. So I was like, is, that's what I'm gonna do. There are all these people I see on my uh, Twitter timeline that are like, oh my god. Is there a way to turn off the the fact that in God of War, uh, Atreus keeps telling you what to do and how to solve puzzles? And I'm over <laughs> here like, that was the best goddamn part. 
<laughs> that was the best part. It was amazing to see that happen. Like, I'd be stuck on a puzzle for like two minutes, then he'd just tell me what to do, and I'd be like, oh, thank God, and then, <laughs> and then move on. And everyone's like, oh, I want to figure it out for myself. That's part of the fun. I'm like, that's not fun. That sucks. That's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's... <laughs> <laughs> That's why there's there's different different games for different people. <laughs> yeah, it definitely teaches me a good lesson about game dev where I'm like, what I think is fun is not necessarily what is actually fun. Yeah, like I, I even enjoyed like Elden Ring because of how open world and everything it was. Like I know I did my whole my whole uh like I'm not gonna fight anything type of thing but like once i beat it doing that i was like i actually would probably go back and fight so like i enjoyed it that much because it's like you just run around you explore you find all the little hidden things and there's no you know there's there's the main story you're following but there's no like main main story like, it's not structured in any way and i love that yeah i mean that's that's fun when that's the game like the story comes from you discovering things right like mm -hmm. that's why you know for example i enjoyed old warcraft like back in the day because there was no no matter what anyone tells you there was no story there was no structure to that at all you just were like i'm playing inside the world from the rts game and it was fun and then you ran around and then eventually they added like the dragon was actually a lady like that kind of stuff yeah. and then you're like oh okay but in the beginning it was none of that and that made it fun it was weird and silly and that that i that i dig that i dig zero structure but if you're gonna put structure in and then in between the structure and the story, you have like two hours of n utter nonsense of just go to this area, kill a hundred guys. Nah, that takes me out immediately. I'm like, I hate this. <laughs> well, you know, my other thing I don't like about this type of game is just, uh, well, not that I don't like, it's not against the game in particular, but like it's terrible for content creation because literally I go to my Twitch page, like everybody's streaming it. But, like, it's so structured, and, like, especially at the start, that, like, if I watch somebody, I'm like, oh, I watch someone else do this. Like, there's no, there's no innovation, there's no, like, creativity there, and, like, spontaneity. It's just someone else is watching the movie. So it's like, I, I don't want to watch this streamer play, and then, like, nobody's watching, and then people are like, ah, oh, nobody wants to watch the new God of War. It's like, no, I don't want to watch the same thing I just saw, like, ten other people play through. Yeah, and a lot of it's about reaction, too. Um, mm. When you beat it, for example, sometimes you want to go back and see how people reacted to certain moments. Mm -hmm. And I get that, but also there is sort of a, a – it's kind of like with Airbnb right now. You see all these Airbnb people complaining and, and messaging and freaking out about how no one's renting their Airbnb. It's because they oversaturated the market, and rather than do normal – capitalist stuff where they lowered the prices to try and get people. They just kept the prices where they were and no one's going to go. It is now cheaper to go to a hotel than get an Airbnb. <laughs> yeah. You're paying hundreds of dollars in cleaning fees. They expect you to like clean up after yourself and take care of their home. That's so much pressure on a vacation. Why would you do that? And so it's just easier to get a hotel. And I think the problem with Twitch is it's just over. There's so many people streaming. Mm. So many people doing stuff that I think in order to be seen, uh, truthfully, I don't know how you do that. And, you know, this past week I saw people on Twitter being like, this is tough. I don't know what I'm doing. I keep trying to chase numbers. And it's like, you shouldn't do that. You should try to just do what makes you happy if you're going to be a streamer. But I think everyone sees streaming as a job rather than a hobby that can develop into a source of income. Well, and the that's problem. the problem. Well, I'd say the problem is once you've created it into a job, then you have to have it as a job because then you can't do what makes you happy because then you're like, well, now rent's due and I don't have money. So sure, then what you but, do? Then you're stuck in the situation. Well, and that's the same thing that we've talked about before where it's like streaming is street performance on a computer. And some days you ain't going to get money performing on the street. That's just the way it is. And I think, unfortunately, is... A lot of people have gotten in their head that they are going to be, this is like a stable source of income. And it's simply not. Well, yeah, that's why I always bring it up. TV, the biscuit, saying you need at least five sources of income, right? You would always say that. And he's right, yeah. because if one yeah. goes away, you need the other ones to fall back on. 
So, you know, uh, and I think a lot of people get into one, like, not even just Twitch, but, like, so many different platforms. Like, I'm just going to be a YouTuber. I'm going to be a streamer. It's like, no, you have to be in everything, especially right. in this day and age where everything's so oversaturated. Like, you literally have to do all the things. Like, it's just, it's what you have to do. That's, it, it, I got obsessed this week where I tweeted about this. I was, I watched, man, who was it? It was some, some vlogger who does like uh, political commentary stuff. It was the election week, so I was watching this political commentary vlogger and she was talking about how she was going to do TikToks and made like one or two, because people were asking her, is it, do you have a TikTok? Is this really you? And she was like, yes, that's absolutely me. I made one or two, but I realized I need to focus all my content on YouTube. I need to focus here. And as I, as she said that, I like went back through all of her videos and I saw that, uh, her timeline of videos, she started like around the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. So all of her videos, she was doing a video a day. And and I, I think her original content was like, wear a mask, dummies. I'm sure I'm pretty sure that's what it was. But uh she was doing a video a day, and then it went from one video a day to three to four a week, to two a week, to one every six or so days, to now whenever she has something to say. Yet her thing was, I'm trying to focus on YouTube. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. hmm, okay. So that sparked me on, I must have looked at 50 or so YouTube uh, creators. And I noticed a huge trend of all these people a year, two, or three ago, dumping a video a day, going hard, doing like, uh, like pretty good numbers. And then over time, they started to grow, which I think is the thing that... I'm sure you and I both agree happens. You grow and then you feel like you can like, oh, well, my numbers are better, so I, I don't need to put out a video right. today. Like that kind of thing. And so watch the numbers grow and they went, and it's like clockwork. Every single one that I saw, the trend was there. It was, we did a video a day and now we're down to three or four a week and now we're down to two and now we're down to one and now it's down to however, whenever I can get it out. And I am so curious if it is, these people started during COVID and they had the free time because they weren't going anywhere to make videos a day. Or if they burnt themselves out doing every, like doing a video every single day, which is absolutely a thing that happens. Oh, yeah. And I would, you know, I clearly don't have the time. I'm sitting here editing God of War till I die. But I would, that's a study. Like just someone out there who wants to look into it. It's super interesting because just like you saying, oh, I need to devote all my time to this, right? Or mm. I need to focus, this is my job now. But at the same time, if you're not in different places, then when you burn out in one, you can't be creatively free in another one. Right. And I'm fascinated by it. I'm fascinated by all these people who were like, I am a content creator, this is my job. Be it YouTube or Twitch or OnlyFans, whatever. All these people jumped on during COVID because it was like the thing you could do from your home and it made sense and there was passion behind it and a drive to keep you busy while the world's like crumbling around you. And now things have changed and I'm curious how much that affects the outcome and what that has done to the different creators. It's super interesting to me. I'm fascinated by that kind of stuff. It's also just most people burn out after a year or two of just whatever they're doing, especially if they're doing it all the time. And it just so happens a lot of people started around then because they had nothing to do. I think the best way to go about it is obviously like diversify what you're doing and, you know, maybe have one of those platforms where you get more creative than the others. Cause I mean, then uh, even, even on Twitch, if something you could be like, you know what, for uh, half the streams I do, I'm going to play something that mainly gets views. And I'm like, you know what, just do it for the views. And then the other half be like, I'm going to have fun. Like you can, you know, kind of try to focus it a bit more. The problem is I think people focus entirely on numbers and when you see like, oh, uh, I did this stream for y'all and I'm going to do a little bit for me. And when the numbers for you disappear, then suddenly you get like hard on yourself. Yeah. It's, it's, it's tough. It's a tough industry. And every time, again, every time I meet anyone and they're like, I want to be a streamer when I grow up, I'm like, please go into science <laughs> or become like, do something to help society. Please, I <laughs> beg you, become a doctor, do anything but this. This is, it's soul crushing sometimes. I'm over here not saying, I, God of War, great game. I'm not even, I don't even care anymore about God of War. I'm like, I have to edit so many hours of this stupid game. Like, that's not fun. That's not fun.
You heard it here first. Jesse Cox hates YouTube. He hates Twitch. He hates God of War. And he hates you. I love YouTube. I love content creating. I don't. There's a reason why I left the grind. That's why I don't do that. Uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah, yep. it's only Let's Play I got. It's my WoW leveling Let's Play. It's like two episodes a year. Everyone's like, why aren't you leveling fast? I'm like, and then they see me stream WoW. And they're like, wow, you got the max level? I'm like, yeah, because I'm streaming it. I don't have to record it. So and that's the difference. Yeah, that's yeah. the supreme difference is streaming is a better Let's Play venue than YouTube. And it always will be. Unless you're like, uh, I saw some dude, I don't know who it was, put a 17-hour Let's Play up of God of War. <laughs> Day one, 17 hours. And I was like, well, he wins. <laughs> um, well, that's good for your week. <laughs> How are you? Please tell me you did anything better than what I had. I'm a bitter uh, old man, as you can tell. Yes. Well, here's what I did. Went to the gym. Um, almost every day. Uh, so yeah. In fact, I think I skipped one day. I didn't go one day, but every other day I went. Uh, that was pretty good. Back in the gym grind. Felt good after that. Uh, have you still been doing your gyms? I went to the gym yesterday, and uh, because I didn't go the week before, because I was in Solvang with my parents... Mm. Um, he was like, today I'm going to, I'm going to break you. And I was like, do it. That's how much I hate myself this week. <laughs> I was like, bring it. I don't even care. He tried to get my big ass to plank, bro. That's where we were at. <laughs> That's where I was. And I walked away. He's like, so he's like, you feel that? And I was like, I feel nothing anymore. <laughs> so like, you can't do anything to me. He's like, we'll see you about next week. And I was like, do it. I'll still be editing this damn video. <laughs> <laughs> so you go. You just got to get back in that gym more. You got to, you know, get your editing frustrations out. I honestly do. The problem is, is when you spend all day trying to, if I was at home, this is the difference. This is what I've learned. If I, if I was at home when stuff was rendering or uploading, I could just like work out because I'm at the office. It's like, okay, rendering, uploading. And I guess I will. Work on more rendering. <laughs> it's like, no. Or you can plank. I cannot plank. I learned that. I learned that I cannot. I think I can do about like six seconds of a plank. <laughs> I cannot plank. Um, so yeah, I'm back in the gym, loving it. Uh, let's see. And then uh, let's see. Me and Toaster Woman got breakfast. That was good. Went to Ikea. Uh, bought a painting. Well, like an Ikea painting. So it's. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Of what? Birch trees. <laughs> yeah. You do not Pretty make good. your home look like a dentist office, please. It's not it's a good uh, it's a good thing. You got do you have a photo of the birch tree? Can I see this? Yeah, hold on. Uh, this reminds me my parents used to have a guest bedroom in their old house. And in that guest bedroom were like the creepiest tree paintings imaginable. <laughs> it was <laughs> those creepy. paintings cool. hid ghosts, I'm sure. Hold on. I'm looking through all their Ikea painting stuff. There well, it this is. is very important, so I'll allow it. All right, here we go. Yep, bam. It's that I can't one. Wait to see this. Get out of town. The, all right, first off, beautiful, but also 100% one of those things where if you stare at it long enough, you see, like, the ghost in the background. <laughs> it is a bunch of, I think, birch trees with, uh, you know, like maybe a snowy scene or a lake in the background. I can't really tell. But I'm telling you, this is one of those things where if you stare at it long enough, a dude is just, like, Slender Man is just in the shot. <laughs> Terrifying. Terrifying photo. Where do you put this? Where'd you put this? Uh, on the wall. Wait, which like, wall? What do you, the bigger wall. In what, by what the, room? By the TV. <laughs> okay. I don't know why it took so long to get there. When I said, where did you put this? I, of course I knew a wall. <laughs> Well, that's what I'm saying. This guy doesn't know where you hang a painting. Uh, the whole thing, you got to build it. The annoying part is the actually building it. You got to, like, put the... You bend it around a frame, and you, like, push these plastic things into a thing. That was a workout in itself. I didn't even have to go to the gym that day, but I you did. You can't... You can't... They made you build a painting? Well, it's Ikea. You build everything. I hate, I hate that. Why... <laughs> oh, yeah. never mind. This thing is huge. That's what I'm saying. It's a it's a pretty big painting. We gotta hang it. There's only like one wall we can hang it on. Whoa! Otherwise. This thing is. I thought this was. You know what? No, this is seventy-eight by fifty-five. 
This is a Bro, this painting. is a wall size painting. Yeah. We used to have one and then it kept falling off. <laughs> and so we got rid of it. And then we tried like some other like smaller things. And then I was like, I kind of want one of those big painting things again, even though it's like, like it, it, it's a, it's a honker, but yeah, there's, there's literally only one wall we can put it on. So it was like, well, that's where it goes. Never mind. I stand corrected. This is, it's <laughs> massive and awesome. I love this. Although yeah. this could be a portal to hell. It's big it enough that be. Slenderman could just walk through the painting. I haven't died yet. <laughs> yet. <laughs> yes. So I went to back to the main IKEA page and there is literally a two set of paintings called Pajirtdi <sighs> Rid and <laughs> it it's like spooky ghost clouds on the ground. <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> terrifying. We used to have uh, the Granby. You see the Granby there? It's like a variety. I do see the I do see the Granby. The problem I love with the, the Granby is uh, we they they kept falling off. Like there like would always be like Paris, three right? it's just missing. It's just pictures of Paris. Is that what it is? No, it's uh, like blue sky, trees, fog. Scroll down one more. There's another Grombie, oh, dude. There's another Grombie. I guess it's the sky. two Grombies. No, it's the the blue sky foresty Grombie. Not that other Grombie. Not the other Grombie. No. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, don't do that unless you're gonna like. But then you're gonna have like what, like three, six, eight, like at least like ten nails in the wall. So you're gonna have to use wall, like, and then they keep falling off. So like with this, it's just you know two nails. You can patch it up later, and then yeehaw. Cool. Uh, uh, yeah, I dig that. So, yeah, I did that. That was a good day. Uh, let's see. And then uh, I do anything else crazy this week? I streamed WoW. Uh, we did some faded raids. That was fun. <laughs> you said, did I do anything else crazy this week? Pause. <laughs> I streamed WoW. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, listen, that's all I'm saying. It's crazy stuff. <laughs> it's um, great doing things crazy. Play and WoW. Then, uh, you remember I used to play all the Kaizo Ironmon? Yes. So I still do. Um, I'm now at run 1,000. And... So me and Sinvicta have actually turned it into a game. Where, what does that mean? So what we do is we each stream, and we call it lab races, because you're stuck in the lab, right? And so we make it, if you get out of the lab, that's a point. If you beat your rival, that's five points, and every gym leader and rival after that is five more points. So it's incentive to actually get out of the lab and not die to go back to the lab and get points. So... Uh, we turn into this race, be like, all right, you got one hour, two hours, like, who gets the most points? And so it's it's become pretty fun, where we're both just like, come on, get out of the lab. And then we, like, try to get to the rival, but sometimes if you take too long to get to the rival and you die, you got zero points. The other person's, like, building up points from getting out of the lab and dying over. Like, it's it's great. So we do that now. Uh, and we're trying to, like, mix, mix it up a little bit. Like, if you run into an ice Pokemon because it's getting cold outside, you have to catch it no matter what. Like, that type of thing. So that's been fun. Yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah, it's been a fun, like, uh, people like watching it. We make it so if you want to give, like, a, if you sub or gift a sub, you get to pick which ball fails, essentially. <laughs> uh, so that's fun. Uh, so, you know, that's that's been great. Overall, we, we still haven't beaten that game. But. Uh, I thought, didn't you, did you not beat it? Am I crazy? I, I thought got you to Lance it. of the Elite Four. I've gotten the Elite Four three times. I've died each one. Damn, dude. Damn. I think only Octo beat it, and uh, RX beat it. RX, he took, dude, he took like three thousand attempts or something, like four thousand. That's uh, that's so that's so many. It's, I would have given up after like six. Oh, you definitely. This is like my type of game. Like I love the <laughs> RNG. I love give me RNG every day. I love it. Pull the Pokemon slot machine lever. Uh, and then the thing was like when Octo beat it, he's like, yeah, you know, I was the first person to beat it, everything. I could see it in his eyes. Like he missed it. You know what I mean? You know how like you finish that journey and then you start something else, but there's still that part of you that's like, what if, can I just go? What if I go back? You know, like, I understand. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Like I, I think he, he wanted to go back. He did the Pokemon gold for a bit, but I think now he's, he's moved on. But me, I'm still going. I love it. Uh, and then uh, what else? The you know my typical blood bowl, 
Pointless top 10 skeletons. That's been doing great. Took off, dude. Took off. Yeah. 60, I keep seeing people views. talk about it. Yeah. 60,000 people loving those skeletons. Yeah, I even had uh, <laughs> even <laughs> we, were, we were doing our faded raids yesterday and Kraken was like, Crendor, I saw your skeleton video. I got recommended to me and I was like, yeah, we're hitting those <laughs> algorithms. <laughs> Let's go. We also did oh, cats. Yeah. It's great. I love my pointless top 10. My favorite part, I said it before, is that even if you don't play WoW, you can be like, yeah, I'll look at some skeletons from Warcraft. <laughs> you know? I, I, I do. I <laughs> I don't play WoW currently, and I watched it, so, like, yeah. There you go. But um, here's the thing. Your pointless top tens, clearly work of passion. I can oh, tell yeah. because you leave in the bits where you're like, I'm going to Google this. <laughs> like, that's just my style. It's the, it's the so I funny. care, but I don't care. You know what right. I mean? Right, yeah. That's just it's, it's a good I, style. It was like back when I'd make machinima stuff and I'd like make a video and I'd be like, dude, this is a fun video, but I don't want to film this part. And I'd be like, I'm just gonna Microsoft paint it, slap it on. You know? And then that just it's became a, a it's thing. It's a vibe. But yeah. that's what I did. So I'm like, I don't want to film this. Right? So whatever. I, <laughs> I think I think creating content that you enjoy is the key. Going back to what I was saying earlier. Mm -hmm. You just gotta like focus on what you love and people will see that you love it and they'll enjoy it with you rather than like i do this because i feel like i have to yeah but i think a lot of people the hard, the hardest part is finding what that is as well well that just comes down to knowing yourself man uh, well, i will some say people they don't even know themselves what i'll say again we talked about this before we streamed or streamed oof, <laughs> before we did this <laughs> podcast but don't don't try to find yourself find your crendor you, you may never find who you are, <laughs> but if you, you can find your Crendor, if you can get in there and find out your, your the Crendor inside of you, there's a Crendor in all of us, is what I'm saying. Find that Crendor and let that beast out. Let him just, like, make wacky <laughs> videos for you. Yeah, it's there. It's there. It's there. Maybe find the Crendor just, in all of us. Maybe you're just one Granby away. Go purchase yourself <laughs> a Granby or a Bjorkstra. Yeah, you got to get the Bjorkstra. <laughs> got to get your Bjorkstra. Well, you know what else you can get? Oh, Jesse, that's a good segue. Beautiful. <clears throat> you can get yourself something that will take care of one of your most special places. That's right. I'm talking about your butthole. Yep. Mm -hmm. Imagine you're walking down the street and a bird poops right on your arm, right? All right. What are you going to do? Just like wipe it off with a napkin? No. You're going to wash it off. <laughs> so why is your butthole any different, people? Stop smearing your business around with toilet paper and start washing it with water from a Hello Tushy bidet. Stop spreading your business around your butt, your bum, your whatever you want to say, and start using Hello Tushy. Hello Tushy is so simple. The bidet system, it's an attachment. So it washes your butt with fresh water, better clean than toilet paper. All you got to do is just boop, boop, pat that dry when you're done. Attaches to your existing toilet. You don't need to be a plumber or an electrician. It takes like eight, maybe, maybe 10 if you're slow minutes. Cuts down your toilet paper use by like 80%. You save money, you save uh, time, you save uh, paper waste. Make your restroom your best room with the complete Toshi system. It has uh, a bidet attachment, the ottoman, a toilet brush, the whole thing. Over a million happy bums are using Toshi. And maybe, maybe take a chance, do it yourself right now. I know for a fact that I talked the other day. I met a guy and he was like, oh my God, I tried Hello Toshi, dude. I thought you guys were just talking out your ass, which hilarious. I love that joke. <laughs> but he was in. He was like, you sold me on it. I gave it a shot. I can't go back. And that's the thing. Once you're in, you cannot go back. It is wiping your butt with paper seems weird after that. It really does. We want you, right now listening, to give it a shot. Visit hellotushy.com slash cox to get 10% off plush. Plush? That's right. Plush. <laughs> like your butt. Plus... Free shipping right now. And if, you know, you want to give us a shout out and let us know what you think, you can tag us online or at Hello Tushy. It's all good. We want to celebrate with you. That's hellotushy.com slash Cox for 10% off and free shipping. Also today, we're brought to you by Babbel. Babbel is going to get you learning that new language in such a short amount of time that you'll be blown away. But it makes sense because they've sold over 10 million subscriptions to the language learning app that is just 
taking the world by storm. You've heard it on this show before many times. Like, it is so simple. I'm using it to kind of, like, get back in with my Spanish that I learned in eighth grade and then subsequently forgot. And now I'm, I'm, now I'm in it. Now things are, things are coming together. With Babbel, you only need 10 minutes to complete a lesson so you can start having real-life conversations and new language in, like, three weeks or so. It is great because it immerses you in it. Right? Just like if you move to another country and you were immersed in the language, that's what they do with Babbel. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans or whatever, but Babbel has over 150 language experts working to help you. They're not, you know, computers. They're native language speakers. Their teaching method is scientifically proven to be effective. You can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, German, plus Babbel has speech recognition technology, which is, let's be honest, the key. Because some people, like me, definitely slur weird words together. And it's like, ah, yes. Uh, thank God this thing is helping me. There are many ways to learn on Babbel. You can do podcasts or games or videos or stories, even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. So start your journey to learning a new language right now by joining Babbel. All you got to do to get 55% off your subscription when you go is go to babbel.com slash Cox, that's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash C-O-X to get 55% off of your subscription. Babbel, language for life, Crendor. Let's go chop up the guy. Let's try to boop. Uh, yeah. A lot of slurs. Lot of, I'm slurring everything there. I can't. It just came out. He has lost his mind. We are up here in the Trapper Copter where we have all oh, we lost our minds long ago. <laughs> uh, and it's looking like there is traffic down there, especially with Thanksgiving coming up. Only a week and a half away. Are you kidding me? Uh, playoff. Um, so make sure you get your turkeys and uh, watch where you're driving. Back there. Thanks, Crendor. Now let's go over to Crendor at the weather desk. How's that weather? Weather. We got a weather suggestion for Aberystwyth. Uh, pronounced what? Aberystwyth. Uh, though the last syllable rhymes with Smith rather than with. Aberystwyth. Ab- Wales. How do I spell that? Oh, it's Wales. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I couldn't even tell you how to spell that if it's Wales. Probably has a W in there somewhere. Uh, here you go. It actually does. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. It really does. Uh, they said, I've recently started my PhD there and did my undergraduate degree there a few years ago. Local sites include the Castle Funicular Railway, the Vale of Rydal Heritage Railway to the Devil's Bridge, and Red Kite Sanctuary, where you can see dozens of red kites to send down at feeding time. Lots of nice restaurants, including Paprika, a Hungarian restaurant where you can get a chimney cake, a Hungarian dessert in which they wrap cake batter around a metal tube, then spit. I'm already there. I'm already looking. I'm already going. I'm already looking at it. I'm going right now. Includes Mid Delight, the Royal Pier restaurant, and Antalya. Uh, As for the weather there, it is 58 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, rain possible around 4.45 a.m. going into the night. This will probably be like an hour after this is uploaded. Uh, we have high of 59, humidity 80%, pressure 29.76 inches, visibility 10 miles, 7.36 a.m. sunrise, 4.24 p.m. sunset. Winds at 8 miles an hour, dew point 52, UV index 0 of 10, and a moon phase of a waning gibbous. Uh, looking at the 10-day. Beep, 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 beep. Monday, light rain early, remaining cloudy with showers in the afternoon. High of 59, winds south at 5 to 10 miles an hour. Chance of rain, 90%. Partly, cloud, partly cloudy skies in the evening will give way to cloudy skies. Rain overnight, low 47. <laughs> chance of rain, 100 percentiles. 15 to 25 miles per hour on the old winds going southeast and near a half. Uh, or no, near a quarter of an inch of rain is possible. And every day this week is 50 to 54 degrees with rain. Honestly, that sounds amazing. That's like my favorite weather. I just want to say, look at this paprika restaurant. I don't know if this person works there or they're just looking for shameless advertising. But these these chimney cakes are fascinating. They're It looks like an, a giant unfilled cannoli. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, it does. Covered with, like, cinnamon and sugar on the outside. Uh, although you can get them filled with stuff. There is a small chimney cake filled with special cream. Don't know what that special cream is. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it comes in. There's chimney cake. I'm fascinated by this, dude. I can't. So there's chimney cake, cinnamon, vanilla, coconut. Those are three varieties. But then there's luxury chimney cakes, Oreo, Lotus. What the hell is Lotus? <laughs> Raspberry, hazelnut, vanilla, double caramel, matcha tea, M and M's, Nesquik, walnut, <laughs> and poppy seed. I don't know about that poppy seed. That seems like. Oh uh, yeah. And then there's a cheesecake, a chimney cheese, a traditional chimney cake with the savory. That's a savory version. What the? These things look crazy, but with that said, I was looking at the other stuff at the restaurant, and they do like, you know, burgies and like, like a cool kind of meat veggie plate, mm. but then you scroll down enough, and there's like a dish that looks like some sort of brown meat, some meat with sauce, <laughs> and then one spicy pepper, and I don't know what that is, but I bet that's the most delicious damn thing on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a stew. You would just, it would fill you up. And you'd be like, yo, that's delicious. But the outside, it looks like the place you'd go to get a quinceanera dress. Oh, yeah. Look at that. It does. It, <laughs> the best part is, is in the window is like a reflection of across the street, and it's just a KFC. A giant KFC <laughs> is across the street. It's very funny. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> it, I mean, great. Yeah. You've, you've already sold me. I would go there in a heartbeat. I can't pronounce anything. It, it, let alone the town name, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, this looks great. Yeah, big fan of giant. When you put a big ham hock or whatever the hell this is on the plate, I'm there <laughs> for it. Um, that's the weather. All right, let's go to sports. Sports. Welcome to the sports desk. We got sports. Here we go. <laughs> Uh, first things first, we got NFL football today. Uh, currently, the 49ers are beating the Chargers 19-16 to with six minutes to go in the game. We'll see how that turns out. Uh, Panthers beat the Falcons on Thursday. Buccaneers beat the Seahawks in Germany. Lions beat the Bears because they missed an extra point. Uh, Dolphins beat the Browns. Titans beat the Broncos. Vikings beat the Bills in overtime. Giants beat the Texans. Chiefs beat the Jaguars. Steelers beat the Saints. Yep. Colts beat the Raiders. Cardinals beat the Rams. Packers beat the Cowboys in overtime. Woo! And uh, that's that. Then <laughs> over to the NBA. That's that. <laughs> we got the Eastern Conference Bucks in first place at ten and two. Celtics ten and three. You got the Hawks at eight and five. The Cavs at eight and five. And the Wizards eight and six. All the top five teams right there. Over in the Western Conference, you got the Trailblazers and the Nuggets up top at nine and four. The Suns at eight and four. The Jazz at ten and five, and the Grizzlies at nine and five. And in the NHL, we got our standings here: Bruins up top at twenty-eight points, Devils at twenty-four points, Islanders at twenty, uh, and then in the West, you got the Golden Knights at twenty-six, and the Kings at twenty-one points. And the Jets and Stars tied at 19 points, top central division. Those are your best teams and your sports. All right. Let's go to our fact of the day. Why did you say that like William Shatner? Because I want to switch it up. You like to switch it up. Why can't I switch it up? Uh, I don't know. You just know, you don't normally switch it up. Well, that's because sometimes I want to. But I don't because I don't have the, the I don't, I, I'm, lo I'm unlocking my Crendor. I'm let I'm I found my crendor. I'm letting him out. <laughs> All right, I can appreciate that. Thank you. Um, the longest wedding veil was the same length as 63 and a half football fields. Why? I just I'm not even gonna ask how. I imagine <laughs> anything's possible with enough money, but why? Yep. When Maria Periskeva, Skiva, Skiva. A woman from Cyprus got married in August of 2018. Her goal wasn't just to say I do. She was also determined to set a record. Quote, My dream as a child has always been to break the Guinness World Records title for the longest wedding veil. <laughs> she fulfilled her dream by wearing a lace veil that stretched 22,843 feet and 2.11 inches or as long as 63 and a half football fields. But what? Is there a photo? There's got to be, right? There is. Okay. I'm that already is. I'm already on it. I'm already I already I already typed in it. it's too late. 
<laughs> I, I mean... I mean, yeah, there's... I've never seen a true... Like, I don't know this woman, and I probably never will, but I've never seen a more accurate example of what... I would say Bridezilla. <laughs> it's just... It, it's not even, like, the length. Like, it's not just going straight. It's, like, looping back and forth. Like, yeah. it looks like a, a garden. It, the photo that you linked to me, and most of the photos are of her excited as hell, and the guy she's married to just like, it's another day. He does not, <laughs> he he does looks, not care. He kind of looks like Crip. He really, <laughs> he does have a Criparian, yes. Yeah. <laughs> that seems like, it seems like a lot, but bless their, bless their souls, I guess. It's fine. My favorite part is I went to an article to, to learn more about it. First comment, Why? <laughs> Good question. Good question. Pardon, Summers. Good question. I mean, listen. She said this has been her dream since she was a child. So I, I mean, don't believe that. Look at that. <laughs> I don't believe I. This quote is: "I dreamed of breaking this record almost my entire life. Thirty volunteers helped make this dream come true." I don't believe your entire life. You said when you were like four, you said this is what you wanted. I don't believe it. <laughs> I, I refuse. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm just bitter because it got a war, but <laughs> but I don't I don't think so. What if she only got married to him because he was just like, all right, I guess we can do that. That <laughs> was then, yeah. That's she. He's the only one that's like, all right, I'll go through with this. She dated a lot of other guys, but they're deal breakers. They wouldn't do this. This guy, he was in. <laughs> um, it took three months to create and deliver. Cost four thousand euros. For oh, just this I part. I thought it cost more than that. I mean, it's just fabric, really, right? Yeah, but I figured it'd be like expensive fabric. But No, guess, I'm pretty know. sure she got the cheapest she could. Yeah, well, when I heard that, I thought it would be like some crazy fabric, like royalty thing. Like, this costs $100,000 million. When you said 2018, I was shocked. Because I thought you were about to be like, the year was 1564. And Queen <laughs> yeah. Anne, I was like... <laughs> The, the the peasants of the town were forced to. <laughs> yeah, that's what I, I swear to God, that's what I thought you were about to say. Yeah. Um, so there you go. All right. What is our big news story of the day? Florida traveler stuffed gun into a raw chicken and tried to bring it on plane. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Flor you had to say Florida travels like we didn't already know. It's definitely who. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I the best part is is it wasn't like they went and got a Costco chicken and put the gun in it. It was we're bringing a raw chicken. <laughs> yeah, I have. All right, chicken. why? A prospective air traveler was roasted by the Transportation Security Administration on social media on Monday after officers with the federal agency said it caught the person trying to conceal a gun inside a raw chicken stash in their carry-on luggage. The weapon was flagged. <laughs> at Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport in Florida where officers found it wrapped in what looked like thin paper packaging and hidden inside a raw chicken. I I don't... Uh, the, I'm less concerned about the gun and more concerned about the raw chicken. They probably would be too. Like, this dude's got a raw chicken in his bag. What? I don't know what that... Like, that is some serial killer shit. Like, it is... It, <laughs> it makes... The, oh, you're just gonna bring a raw chicken on a plane? Why? <laughs> I'm going to be cooking it. <laughs> uh, a post shared to the official TSA Instagram account on Monday included, included photos of the uncooked bird being examined in an airport security screening area and the gun once it was removed and unwrapped. Its caption leaned heavily into Thanksgiving-themed puns, starting with, there's a person, personal foul here. Nope. No, you know what? Nope. TSA, your governmental agency. We don't need jokes. We don't. We don't know. Yeah, that out. we don't need jokes here. No. Uh, the plot chickens. Jesus. You know what? I was. Are. I was fine with the fact that they use roasted to begin with. I was like, all right, I'll let it slide. But that sucks ass. <laughs> <laughs> For shame on you, writer. For shame. Hey, we barrel our way closer to Thanksgiving. A TSA spokesperson wrote, For us, it's a time to be thankful for that our officers are always working around the clock Come to on. keep you safe. This is the TSA said this? <laughs> yeah. 
I have to go through those damn metal detectors and pretend like you have authority, and you're going to do this? Get out of town. Uh, it gets worse. <laughs> Take, for instance, this Hen You Believe It find at Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood International Airport. We hate to beak it to you here, uh. but stuffing a firearm into your holiday bird for travel is just a bad waste of time. This idea <sighs> wasn't Buddy. even half-baked. It was raw, <laughs> greasy, and obviously unsupervised. The only roast <laughs> happening here is this poor packing choice. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, there are rules for traveling with guns and ammunition. I stand corrected. This is the best article that's ever been written. <laughs> this is one of those jokes that went from being not funny to, like, you know when they, the comedian does a thing so much it's funny at first, then it becomes unfunny, <laughs> yeah. then becomes funny again? <laughs> yeah. That's where we, we, hit, we hit funny again. That's true. That was I amazing. Think, I think they were just like, all right, Tia, let's see, Janet, go write an article about the mega post. <laughs> then Janet was like, all right, I, how can I get out of work today? Let's just think of all the puns I can for this you article. You know someone like, was where? online Googling chicken puns. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, cuisine for a full Thanksgiving menu, including fresh meat and seafood, are permitted in carry-on luggage as long as travelers abide by federal packaging guidelines, which are available on the TSA website. However... People looking to travel with guns and ammunition are required to pack unloaded weapons in locked hard-sided containers in their checked bags and must declare those items at the airport ticket counter when they arrive. The officer's discovery in Fort Lauderdale is among many bizarre finds by TSA officers at airports across the U.S. Last year, a chainsaw was flagged in New Orleans and something the agency called a meth burrito was confiscated in Houston. <laughs> I love meth burrito. That sounds. I would love to see what that. I'm, out, I'm looking it up. I'm going to the internet. Yep. Meth burrito. Traveler busted with crystal meth inside breakfast burrito. That yeah, checks out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I just want to see it. I just want to see what it looks like. Yeah. Uh, Apparently, it's very hard to find online. Oh, hey, there it is. Oh, I see it. Yeah. Yeah. It really was just a breakfast burrito with meth inside of it. <laughs> so yeah, at least this is a little more like, like passable. Like, oh, they're just bringing their rap burrito. But even then, it's still weird. But that makes I can understand why a drug dealer or someone would think, oh, I'll bring my burrito on the plane. No one's gonna check my plane burrito. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Although, that makes although, sense. how would you? I guess you'd have to get it through security first. Then yeah. put it in a burrito, get it on the plane. That might make sense, but you still have to bring it. And there's no way yeah. you'd be dumb enough to bring a burrito off the street into an airport and try to smuggle that onto the plane. <laughs> now, although, yeah. never mind. That's probably what happened. <laughs> that probably is what happened. <laughs> um, I mean, moral of the story, don't put your weapons and drugs in food. Maybe not, maybe the not only... take them on a plane at all. Mm, nah, I just don't try to put it <laughs> Yeah. All right, well, <laughs> that's it then. Uh, that's it. <laughs> that is it for us. Thanks so much for listening or watching. I've enjoyed this podcast. Crendor, hit him with the socials. We've got socials. Ooh. I like it. See, oh, I accept I that. that. Why can't you accept my weird stuff? Um, I do this all the time. It's like every 10 minutes I'm doing You're right. It. Yeah, you're right. Uh, we got the website you're listening to this podcast on, which could be numerous ones, but there's youtube.com slash Cox and Crendor podcast, all one word. Subscribe, hit the bell to be notified when these podcasts go up. Give them a like, comment, subscribe. If you do comment your weather requests, cause we only had like two last time. So I mean, Hey, we need more weather places I can randomly choose from. Uh, also, we're on SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes, uh, and we got the YouTube.com slash Cox and Crendor. You got it, you got podcast. it. podcast. There we go. Without the podcast part at the end, that's where all the animations are. Do the same thing over there. Subscribe, like, comment, all that stuff. Also, we have our main stuff, YouTube.com slash Jesse Cox. If you want to watch an old man complain about God of War. And I don't complain during the videos. I'm actually very thrilled. <laughs> 
If you want to see an old man pretend to be thrilled and go to war. <laughs> At the uh, time, you, I loved it. <laughs> YouTube.com YouTube slash Crendor. If you want to see skeletons in World of Warcraft. You can go to patreon.com slash Jesse Cox, patreon.com slash Crendor, twitter.com Jesse Cox, twitter.com slash Crendor, Facebook Jesse Cox, Facebook Crendor, YouTube, uh, the way I already did that one, Twitch TV Jesse Cox, Twitch TV Crendor, uh, Instagram Notorious Cox, Instagram Crendor is taken, TikTok Jesse Cox, TikToks, TikTok Crendor, uh, uh, Warhammer Crendor, Crend Clips, Cox Clips, that's it. All right. That is it for us. Thanks so much. We'll see y'all next time. And as always, Woo! To be continued.